Hello and welcome to the Comedy Slam podcast. I'm Shane O'Connor. He's Adrian Lacey. Apologies, I've, I feel a little bit of a... I've got a little bit of a... a, 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 a Dicky throat? No, I don't think I will, thank you, but thanks for the <laughs> offer. I, I, oh, please. I, I don't know if it's a Bill Mitchell or a Barry White coming on me. I don't know what it... I don't know what, sir. Uh, I thought you said Mary White. I thought that was short for Mary White. Mary, Mary White. I, said, yeah. link. <laughs> I think it's, it's moderately sexy, if you like middle-aged women with horn-rimmed glasses. If you're not the one coughing your spleen up every time you try and say supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, <laughs> it's all right, yeah, isn't it? Exactly. Yes. Anyway, welcome to the Comedy Slab podcast. As I say, uh, I'm Shane O'Connor, he's Adrian Lacey, and every week, near enough, give or take a few weeks here and there, uh, we get together and uh, we haven't missed many, have we, actually? In, uh, in I was two thinking only the other day I had a dicky stomach and was in hospital on week three, I think, yeah. and I thought you were going to replace me. Eternally, what with a with a dicky stomach? <laughs> Just have that there. <laughs> Replace my stomach with something. Else. Yeah. No, I thought I thought you'd get some more reliable person in who Did wasn't uh, sickly. What on episode three? <laughs> yeah, I, I must admit I thought about it, and then when you said you're in the <laughs> hospital, I thought, oh, okay, that's a, that's a bit drastic, isn't it? Really, but I was going to do it from a hospital bed, but then I thought uh, that's hospital radio gone mad. You could have should have done it from the mortuary, couldn't you? The, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> You skipped a week. If you're going to have a go at me, Did you I? missed a week. What was that for? And then I missed another one. I can't remember. I was having my head, didn't I? Domestic, think, wasn't it? domestic crisis. Yeah, which is the same thing. I mean. Yeah. Anyway, so most weeks, I think we've fairly laid that goes to rest, haven't we? <laughs> we, 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 uh, we, we get together and we talk about comedy. We'll uh, alternately each week pick a comedy programme to uh, watch or listen to, depending on what it is. Uh, throughout the Comedy Slab podcast, we'll obviously give you our impressions of it. Thank you very much. That was my impression of Tommy Cooper there. <laughs> Can't do anybody else, really, apart from Frank Spencer. And I think a few slabs ago, we decided that he is no longer relevant. So... <laughs> Uh, and you with him. Sorry, I've got a helicopter going over now just to add to oh, the... Oh, it's never enough. It, last week it was cars. He had a car rally. I've got trains this week. Was it Morgan and Wise when, they did, when he, the helicopter came over and he went, bloody Barrett Holmes? Because they used in their ads in the 70s, didn't they? They used to have this helicopter flying over the Barrett, Barrett the, Holmes. Yeah, well, there was a joke. I remember, it was a stand-up joke, though, back at, around that time for the same reason, which was um, they downed... They downed three helicopters, one of ours, one of theirs, and one of Barrett's. That was the punchline. I can't remember how we got there. But. It's good. I like that one. In fairness, it's probably doing good because it, it more than likely it's the air ambulance because the air ambulance just lives over the back, oh, right. uh, or one of them anyway, certainly. So uh, apologies if they're um, uh, buzzing about, but I'm sure they're doing good work. Uh, during the podcast, we will give the uh, show in question a mark out of five each, giving it a grand total out of ten. We'll play a couple of clips as well. Um, and I think that about wraps it up, doesn't it, for what we're going to do in this episode, or, other than to tell you that it was my choice last week, and I chose um, the music teacher. We were heading off to uh, Lechington Arts Centre, but more of that in a little mm. while. First of all, comedy mm. news. Yeah. Um, and I, I sent you an epistle, didn't I? I, I love that <laughs> word. Yes, you were taking the epistle, I feel. Would you like an epistle? Um, no, thank you. I, I went before I came out. <laughs> now, this is Joe Lysett. Um, yeah. How are we going to cover this, uh, keeping on board our family audience? Well, fellow Brummie, of course, Joe Lysett. I think he's from, he's from Soily Hill, He doesn't he? sound remotely Brummie. He does that in his act, though, doesn't he? He, 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 he does says, I'm, I'm from Birmingham. He said, no, really, I am, you know, and kind of does all that he's sort of... He's incredibly posh, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, he was in, he's, he's touring, isn't he? There's a lot of comedians are. There's a lot of comics out there trying to replace some of the revenue they lost over the last couple of years in lockdown. Mm. And um, he's he's out in, uh, he's been out in Northern Ireland. He's went to, did a show in Belfast. Um, and it's the most bizarre thing. Somebody, <laughs> somebody took umbrage with his, with his set or a joke in his set. Mm. Uh, and called the, and called the PSNI, didn't they? Police Service Northern Ireland. They called the police on him. Um, because they didn't like his joke. Could you, what, do you, what do you make of this? Well, yes, just to lay the ground, he wanted to show a photo of himself as a kid to show how camp and flamboyant he was. A, a naked, naked photo. Well, yes, himself. I was yeah, going yeah. to get on to that. That yeah. is, uh, that is a, an important uh, element of the story because it turns out he took, was it just general legal advice? He didn't go to the police first for advice, did he? No, no. As I think I think he just. It wasn't. It, I kind of took it that it was the venue who said, 
you can't show a picture of a naked child. And he said, well, it's me. And they said, I'm sorry, you can't show a child's genitals. Mm. And he went, well, can I show an adult's genitals? And they went, oh, yeah, that's fine. So he got somebody who's working on the show, um, a, a, a graphic person, to superimpose, I think it's his own genitals, isn't it, onto, like, his own uh, genitals now. Well, so he claims. Onto a picture of... Um, well, this is video, actually. So, oh, was um, it a video? Mo was moving it? genitals. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Move along, with genital men, please. Um, it's a bizarre, I mean, that's the law, is that they could do that, weirdly. Yes. Um, and, and, of course, that's his shtick, isn't it? That's the thing that he does, is he, he kind of runs into resistance. I'm oh, sorry, I thought you meant that was the name he gave his... His shtick. Does anybody want to see my shtick? <laughs> the, he kind of runs into resistance and then writes letters, and that forms part of his act, doesn't it? So this kind of falls straight into the category of of new material that he's created himself in a way. And he that, wasn't the one to change his name to Hugo Boss, was yes, he? Yes, yeah, he was. That yeah, was him. Exactly. Oh, right. Well, he is a bit of a, a legal beta then, isn't he? Yes. If I may use that term. It's, well, I'm just glad you used that term, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's, it could have, I was going to say, not could have ended badly. It could have started well, badly, couldn't it? Well, it could have, yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, but and I, is it the cynic in me that says, is this genuine or not? I don't know whether it's all... Oh, Shane, I was enjoying it as an absolutely true gospel story. I, the reason I picked the story was because we'd had situations, not least at the... Was it the Golden Globes where uh, uh, Will, Will <laughs> Sorry, Smith... Sorry, that, that created quite an image in my mind. So um, I, can't, I can't get it out now. You can't superimpose those on either, apparently. <laughs> They're neither golden nor globes. Yes. Um, right. What was your point? Will Sorry. Smith. Will Smith slapping um, uh, Chris, Chris Rock, Rock because of uh, the, the the joke he made about his wife. And yeah. you think well, you've got people people hitting comedians. Mm. Um, we've now got people phoning the police on comedians. Who'd want to be a comedian in this day and age? Well, millions of people, but uh, of course they don't necessarily anticipate all this trouble. But look, I, I, I can only take it at face value. You or I, neither of us was there. I mean, there are details which don't, which people can't quite agree on. Like there was a claim that people walked out mm. and then someone else who was at the venue is quoted as saying, and this, we're getting this from the Belfast Telegraph, um, they, uh, another person said nobody walked out. So who do you believe? It's yeah. one person's word against another. But I quite, I quite like that. Doesn't it say somewhere that he wasn't quite sure how big to make his genitals as an adult relative to... <laughs> maybe I misread it. Maybe I just dreamt it. It's well, too I think much that, cheese. That was, that was the bit that offended the person, apparently. That, that, uh, well, the, the scale. Or that he said that he didn't know how big a child's genitals were. Well, it's not, I don't think, if it's illegal to say that, then you're going to be in the slammer, but um, I will visit you. But it's not, I mean, the police turned up and went, what about you? Because it was Northern <laughs> Ireland. And, uh, I said, you know, and left. That's probably illegal to impersonate a police officer yeah, don't be <laughs> in Northern and Ireland. It's, I think it's interesting in this week where Rowan Atkinson's given it, because he's got a new thing out, hasn't he? Man vs. B, I think, which is coming out on um, Netflix, where he, he does battle with a CGI um, B. Right, okay. Um, CGI so, B, that's a lot of letters. Yes, yeah, so he's been doing like interviews mm -hmm. and um, about that and they've been asking him about free, freedom of speech and all this stuff which he's quite you know, keen to... Uh, he's, he's good on, isn't he? He's, he's, he's raised the uh, alarm on other occasions when yeah. laws have been badly drafted about and, religious hatred and so on. Yes, him and, him and Stephen Fry, I think, were, were involved in that. But, I mean, he, the, the thing he was saying is that he's, he's like me. He, uh, he's not a great fan of this punching up, punching down malarkey, he said, because, unfortunately, mm. until somebody produces a league table... So you know exactly where everybody stands. Then you know, and 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 also like me, he said he feels that every joke always has a victim. Um, that's that's just the way of jokes. There's always somebody on the end of it. Um, but yeah, I just think it's quite interesting now whether whether comedians will start to, I don't know, self censor in a way. Well, you could argue to an extent they've been doing that for for years. Um, I mean, you can't say things which uh, seriously incite religious hatred, but I suppose there there can be a grey area where someone's using irony and you appear to be inciting it when actually you're doing the very opposite because that's what irony is. Yeah. But how do you prove... Um, that you've been ironic. That, yeah. 
uh, will it stand up in court, if I may use that expression in this context? This is like carry on comedy <laughs> slam, isn't it, this week? It really is. Anyway, I'm sitting here before you naked, but um, that's perfectly legal if you're listening to the audio podcast. And uh, I have put an adult banana where there could be some grey area, shall yes, we say. It's, it's all right, age. everybody. He has got adult genitals. He's got a man's genitals. <laughs> Although when he finds out, he's going to be livid, I tell you. <laughs> Before we move on, oh. can, I, can I ask you the question, which kind of occurred to me, is this, is this the, the start of a slippery slope, do you think, or is it, this is just a one-off? Um, it's not a one-off in the, in the sense that it won't be the end of it. Every now and again, someone will complain. Not complain. Call, call the police, though. It's a different thing from complaining, isn't it? Uh, it's complaining to the police, I suppose. Um, yeah, well, I mean, they could be done for wasting police time if it looks vexatious, but how do you decide that? Yeah. Anyway, um, more from that in the Belfast Telegraph, so it is, uh, <laughs> if you... <laughs> If you're interested. Is, is that legal now? It's just such a lovely accent to do, isn't it? Don't you ever wake up in the morning and think, oh, I wish I'd been born somewhere else. I wish I'd been <laughs> born in the valleys. I'd wake up in the morning and go, where's my Weetabix? You know, and it, I don't know, it's rather than going, has anyone seen my cornflakes? <laughs> I'd much rather do that. But there you go. More names, peak. There's, them's the breaks, as they say. Um, let's mm. move on to the subject of... The Comedy Slab this week. The Music Teacher, written by Richie Webb, um, a fellow Midlander, uh, West Bromwich oh, Albion fan, so you can't have everything. They're everywhere, though, aren't they? Oh, they oh, are. Isn't uh, Joe Lysa, he's a WBA fan, isn't he? Is, is he? West I wouldn't have thought he was a football fan at all, to be honest with you. It doesn't, it doesn't well, strike I've read me it as, somewhere. as the sort. If it that, wasn't that, it was something else I was reading tonight. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, pray, pray continue. Uh, so, Music Teacher, any thoughts on this before we before we delve in? Well, I was genuinely pleased when you said uh, Richie Webb's pedigree, which includes horrible histories, which has been a massive success. I know it's not necessarily aimed at my age group, although I'm sure lots of parents of kids who watch it uh, enjoy it too. Mm. Uh, I love music. Uh, I love comedy, as you know. That's why we're flung together by a force of circumstance in this thing we call the Comedy Slab, to episode 203, so we must like it at some level. Um, so, yeah, everything to play for, looking forward to it. I love Radio 2, not Radio 2, well, that's all right, but I love Radio, comma, T double O. Yeah. And um, I look forward to it. So, yes, everything to hope for and play and pray for. All right, Richie Webb, if you don't know, he's a composer. He's worked with the likes of uh, Mitchell and Webb. As Adrian said, he wrote, he, he wrote all the music for Horrible Histories, and, and I don't know if you've ever seen... Uh, some of the episodes are horrible histories, Adrian, but the, the songs are as funny as the scripts. They're like really, um, he's oh, quite yeah. a clever guy. He, he first sort of invaded my consciousness w with a, a kid's program called Down on the Farm. Um, and he wrote the, the theme tune to that. And I just saw his name at the end and I thought, oh, I'll look him up and see what he, see what he does. And then found out, oh, I thought, oh, okay, there's this guy who, who now I, I had no idea that he'd written comedy as well that he actually written mm -hmm. written comedy you know rather than writing the music for it um but i think he's he kind of works alongside him and dave lamb who uh, does the voiceovers for come dine with me and has written amongst other things hobby bobbies for the radio um have got a production company together and um they uh they put this thing out um what well, can i just have a quick clip and i'll, and I'll and mm. give you an idea of what we're what we're listening to um, as I say, it's, it's set in um, Lechington Art Centre, um, and Richie plays a character called Nigel, uh, Nigel Penny, who is uh, he's a music teacher there. And uh, let's dive straight in. He's just finished teaching a young girl called Alice uh, the cello. So we'll uh, see you next week, Alice. OK. Am I going to help her with that? Keep practising. OK. I'm just going to watch a seven-year-old struggle, am I? Yes. Yes, I am. Oh, and can you uh, send the next person in, please, Alice? OK. I'm going to sit and watch a seven-year-old child struggle to pack a cello twice her size. Bye, then. Because that is what teaching music in an airless practice room in a crumbling art centre is doing to me. Oh. And if I thought it was impossible to top a seven-year-old who's not even sure what the instrument she's playing is called... 
Afternoon. I'd be wrong. Hello, Arthur. And how are you? Not bad, given what I'm about to sit through. Had a good week? Yes, sir. OK, thanks. I'm not going to ask you about yours. Well... I'm not going to ask you about yours. Well, I had a very interesting... Shall we start with some scales, Arthur? Oh, yes. All, all right, then. Sorry to butt in, Nigel. Could I have a word? Oh, sorry, Arthur. Just to get yourself warmed up while I have a word with the Captain Chaos Belinda here. Right. I see little Alice has just fallen downstairs with that cello again. Really? Why don't I feel bad? Why don't I feel bad? What is wrong with me? Quite a nasty fall. Anything uh, broken? Arms or fingers, please. Arms or fingers. No, just a, a few bruises. What is wrong with me? She's a child. What is wrong with him? Do you want a headline? Oh dear, that sounds ominous. Yeah, go on. <laughs> sounds omnibus. Well, actually, I've just thought of a sub-headline or an alternative. Uh, given what we've just heard, which is not now, Arthur, um, which is a Morgan and Wise reference, as you will know. I think you quoted it only this evening when we were idly chatting before a recording. I think that's what put me in mind of it, actually. He's, he was from Warsaw, yeah. Arthur. I can't remember his surname. Oh, you but, stop uh, it. Surely it? someone's from outside the conurbation that is Birmingham. I do like saying conurbation. He's another. Oh, Warsaw is well outside Birmingham, mate. Don't ever say they're in Birmingham in Warsaw. You get hit with a concrete hippo if you carry on like that. It's all the frozen north to a southerner like me. True. Randy Pamby. True. Anyway, the headline I've gone for is the music teacher hits a bum note. Oh dear. Mm, I'm so oh dear. sorry. Well, you heard how high expectations were, and and sometimes that is part of the answer, isn't it? Expectations too high, they can only be dashed. Yeah, well, yeah, but I, I didn't really have any uh, expectations. Um, no idea. No, I was quite pleasantly surprised. I kind of worked the other way for me, really. But go on, then. Mm. Tell me tell me why. Let me give you an example. I'm going to talk you through an example. So it's not referring to the audio we've just heard, oh. uh, or indeed the second audio clip. So I thought I'd illustrate with something that nobody's heard. He has a troupe, a, a choir. Well, it's like a barbershop group isn't it sounds like yes yeah yeah it's in like four, a quartet. four or six blows blows close harmony unaccompanied and they're singing somewhere over the rainbow and it keeps going wrong and it keeps going wrong <laughs> <laughs> see you're laughing do you just you just like taking an uh, 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 arbitrary opposite view to me don't I, you? I swear and, and honest to god now it might i was laughing out loud at that <sighs> laughing out loud. okay well I, I, look, I'm putting on my pointy, pointy analytical slab head. People can can hate me for that, or they can love me for that, or they can feel neutral about it. But anyway, that's what it is. Mm. It is analytical. I'll grant you that. But this, this, I mean, I, no. First off, I didn't enjoy it. So then I start analysing why I didn't enjoy it. So yeah. I'm, I'm bound to put on the pointy head at some point, <laughs> if you'll pardon the pun. <laughs> uh, so, um. It's the top notes they're getting wrong. Now, of all the notes you're not going to get wrong if you're in a troupe, if we take this, if, if you imagine it's a serious choir that we're meant to take seriously, just imagine for a moment it's factual, documentary, the least likely thing to go wrong is the tune that everyone knows, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, mm. okay? Which, by the way, influenced David Bowie and It's a Star Man, octave leap. Oh, yeah. But that's neither here nor there. So, okay, on a factual level, that doesn't work. So we're in the world of comedy. Does it work in the world that uh, has been created? Richie Webb is created in the writing. Mm. Does it work? Um, no, because then when he deconstructs it and the music teacher <laughs> hears the separate parts, they all work. So that's fine. So... Uh, are they taking the mickey? Are they deliberately doing making an error? Well, the, if people listen to that, um, that that doesn't that story doesn't fit. So I'm I'm forced back on the only level I can enjoy it at, or that we're expected to take it at, is surreal because it's not realistic. It doesn't work when they break it down. Mm. It's the least likely part to go wrong. It consistently goes wrong when they're harmonising, but they're good at harmonising. So it has to be surreal, and then. It doesn't work as, as surreal. And, you know, and then I could go into a further pointy head thing, well, why doesn't it work surreally? But it just doesn't for me. So I'm left sort of staring at my radio or podcast playing device and thinking, I really, really wanted to enjoy this, but 
it, it's not it's not connecting on any level right is it it's i mean to me that that whole section was funnier because he 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 did break it down he went right just you you and you sing and they sang and it was fine and then you and you sing and then they sang and it was fine right all together again and then it was it was wrong Mm. and that's that's the thing is that you're then thinking well it shouldn't go wrong should it what's what is going on and then i mean there's nothing to suggest that they weren't that somebody wasn't being subversive is there? There's, I think there was something afterwards because they seem to genuinely not understand what's gone wrong. But again, you you put that in air quotes. It's you know, it's fiction. So yeah, and we're not inside their heads, pointy or otherwise. I just loved it as a little piece, as a little kind of like you know a, a little sort of pastiche that kind of just worked on its own. Even, um, I mean, you could have just lifted that out and made a trailer out of it and said, you know, that's the that's the show. But I just thought it was just it was just the way that it was. You kind of going along with it. This is how I was. I was going along with him and thinking, "Oh, he's going to sort this out now. He'll suss it out." And he'll go, "What? You know, why are you?" But he, even he couldn't. Like he just kind of like let it go. He thought my life's too short. I'm not going to bother with this, and kind of moved on. Um, and all oh, right, okay, great. Off you go and let him go. I mean, I think the interesting thing is that it's that it's born out of this. And you get this straight away. This uh, more or less straight away. He's he's a kind of complex character who can't perform himself, and so the only option left to him is teaching, which he doesn't really want to do. And and with that as a backdrop, to me, the whole the rest of it just kind of fell into place, and it, it and it just you know like kind of like where he's questioning in that clip there, you know. This girl, this seven-year-old girl, struggling out with the chair. What's wrong with me? Why am I doing it now? As a kid who played the trombone briefly, um, mm-hmm. I, I can I can absolutely guarantee you nobody helps you. And I don't know if you've ever seen like a, a trombone. You know, they used to have a big square box for it. It wasn't yeah. even one of these sexy trombone cases. Um, nobody helps you on or off a bus or in the street or at school or the music teacher or anybody. So, I mean, that kind of like resonated as quite accurate, really. But he's he's kind of like this this confinement. He's stuck in this role as a teacher. Not, none of that kind of worked for you at all. No, and it's a real shame. Um, I'm, I, I hear why you found it amusing. There's just, it just, um, I mean, that bum note was hit straight away, uh, which it was just impossible to believe. It just pushed everything too far everything was too fantastical and it just to me it felt like an audio version of a badly drawn cartoon and i say that with a very heavy heart because mm. i wanted to find it funny you know um when you say life is too short um i'm not going to bother with it unfortunately that feels feels like it applies to me in this show which is a shame because they're only 15-minute episodes. It's interesting. How does it differ? I mean, that kind of surrealism, how does it differ from Monty Python, say, where the parallel for me would have been um, in The Holy Grail, mm. where, and I forget who the cat, I think it's Eric Idle is one of them, where he says, like, you stay here and guard the prince. And, and he goes, oh, okay, right. And then he walks out the door with him. He goes, where are you going? He says, I'm coming with you. No. <laughs> you stay here and go, oh, right, right, okay. And then walks out with him again. He... <laughs> You would say, mm. well, that's ridiculous because no, it's, it's it's exactly the same thing, isn't it? But you laughed at that. I did. I laughed when you did it. That's the strange is, thing. Is it you didn't like this because you're in a choir? Is that? <laughs> is it no? I mean that genuinely. Well, that, that sings lots of bum notes. Yeah, no, um, no, be- because theory. of the fact that you know, you know, in, in the same way that if you were working um, in in you know radio and and you. You watch a sitcom about people working in radio. I think, well, it's nothing like that. Is it that kind of feeling you got from it, do you think? It's very difficult. I mean, look, it might have just got me on a, a bad day, although I we, we try and listen uh, uh, to each of these things or watch them twice, and I did that with this, and, and it was two separate days. Maybe I was in a bad mood on both days. Um, but uh, still the expectations were high. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense, does it? Because th- that, that doesn't of itself hold water, because you're a musician too, so you would know. That there's something, I don't know, there's something a bit too nervy about the delivery, although I hear the whole thing is about nervousness and i love woody allen you know in his early funny films to coin a phrase um that's all about neurosis um 
And that's ex- I find that extremely funny and, and liberating, so on. Is the, the delivery, did you not have a sense of the David Mitchells about him? In what sense? Well, if you imagine David Mitchell in Peep Show, it's, this, it was a very similar delivery. It was that, it, it kind of... There was something, you, you said he was a complex character. I have to say, that's part of the problem. He doesn't feel at all complex to me feels uh, as i say cartoony so um it would be interesting if you took the same words with it with david mitchell doing it in what he sees fit as a, a a peep show style delivery say um whether whether that would work that's how i felt that i mean to me that he did do it in a peep style show delivery that's that's how it sounded to me well peep show peep show has more complexity it has that sort of uh, nasty sort of edgy um rivalrous, petty, which is hilarious. What, hoping that a seven-year-old girl breaks her fingers isn't edgy and petty enough? Well, no, 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 no. I think I didn't believe he felt that. It, he had to tell us that. I think the delivery was such that ah, it's all very breathy and... Uh, da, 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 da. And I didn't think... I didn't think for a moment he... I didn't think... I mean, we didn't hear the kid fall down the stairs. I, none of it was believable. Right. Any more than that that troop, the supposed close harmony troop getting the note wrong. You see that? Or I'm, even doing it for fun. They weren't having much fun winding him up. I'm amazed you say breathy delivery, because I, I... You know, and, and quick delivery. Because like I say, I thought it was like very slow and deliberate and, well, like I say, David Mitchell, not only in Peep Show, but kind of everything he's ever done. I mean, David Mitchell is the same, whether he's reading one of his, his <laughs> books or whether he's whether he's in Peep I mean, David Mitchell in Peep Show is David Mitchell. Um, he's got one character, hasn't he, really, in that sense. I mean, if I you, don't know if I agree with that, but... Um, um, if you watch him in The Ambassadors, if you watch him in The Magicians, if you watch him in that pub thing that we, 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 uh, we slammed... Back, it, it? It, they're all... Yeah, 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 maybe, maybe. I, I, I tell you, the difference is... Uh, and look, I've never met him. I don't know the real David Mitchell. I, I'm like both of us, I guess we're we're guessing what is the real David Mitchell, uh, and we might be inferring it from that consistency. But I know you hate panel shows, but I think of David Mitchell on a panel show. This is getting slightly off topic. Mm. I think of him as a bit different, and I have actually seen him in the flesh, uh, waiting for a cab, I think, with uh, Robert Webb at the BBC mm. years ago. And actually, and he was on the phone, and immediately he was a slightly sexier, less nerdy guy standing in front of me uh, that you could see, all right, you know, and, and he's high status because he's a star now and was by then, this a few years back, maybe a decade plus ago. Maybe I should say he's got one character then, and, and but... Yeah, it's, it's I'm, the I'm, same that interest. of itself is not a problem. I just no. didn't believe in this music teacher character. I didn't think it was fleshed out. And there, there is a, a, a semi-technical, semi-performance, semi-directorial problem, which is the internal voice uh, sounds too close to the acoustic voice, as it were. Yeah. It wasn't that I got confused. Um, and and look, presumably it's the effect they wanted because it made it made it you know from from moment. I think they wanted that uh, gear change from external to internal to be so slight, and they're virtually overlapping. Um, they changed so, the panning on it, didn't they? That's that's because I listened on headphones, and they, all they did was. Um, it sounded to me like the one was in stereo, and the one was either in mono or it was panned. Differently, right. I couldn't. I couldn't quite make my mind up what what they'd done with it. But you're right; it was it was very subtle. But it, yeah. again, I mean, it didn't it didn't that didn't harm it for me. That I mean, I thought the writing was really slick. I mean, there's a, there's lovely kind of like throwaway lines that were like delivered, you know, like almost as a as an afterthought. He was he was talking about timpani, and he said, "Oh yes, timpani are very tricky." And then his internal monologue says to manoeuvre, a monkey could play them, which you just saw. <laughs> yeah. You know, and he See, says I to the guy. I laughed again when you said that. That's bizarre. Carry on. And he says to the guy, no, no, no. He said, sticks the other way around. He said, pig bits on the end, which was just thought, you know, the, like the pig skin on the, on the timpani sticks, the, 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 the balls on the end. I just thought oh, it was just. No, see, I, I missed that. That, uh, that was the. A- too technical for me. I didn't know they had pigskin on there. The drunk woman I, I, who comes in the keyboard and it's stuck on Bossa Nova, I just thought was blooming Did you believe that? And did you believe he wouldn't try and stop the Bossa Nova rhythm? I don't think he's got the energy. 
I mean, I just don't. I don't. But think. if he doesn't have the energy, then he then he has to put up with it. It takes more energy. You know, I'm just picking at it because. I just it just didn't win my heart, which is such a shame. She she slows the bossa nova down. She says, "Oh, actually, I think I've invented a new genre." <laughs> I just I just thought it was just oh man, I just I don't know. It was just beautifully done. All right, let's let's um let's see if I can get you on side then um, mm, with two sorry. words. <laughs> and I'm hoping I'm hoping to God, but I don't know, maybe not. Vicky Pepperdine, which I will respond to you with two words. Vicky Pepperdine, by which I mean Vicky Pepperdine is Vicky Pepperdine. I'm sure you've said that on a previous slab, and I've nicked the idea off you, although it, it does stand up to scrutiny. I'm sure she's a lovely person, but she only does posh officious, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what she did. She does it brilliantly. If you want posh officious, you know, look it up in um, a Spotlight, and it says, see it under Vicky Pepperdine. I do think with a lot of these people, though, I don't think it's them, is it? I think th people will go, will you do your posh officious for us, please? They, you know what I mean? I well, think you never know. Do you, you, you know, it, it, yeah, typecasting, casting directors not being particularly inventive. Uh, or in the case of radio, I don't think they'd get casting directors involved. There's too much money. It would be the director themselves in casting, I'm guessing. Um, but it's still, yeah. I, I, you never know. How could we possibly know if, you, if you're not behind the scenes? No. Oh, come on then. Let's have another clip and see if we can raise a titter from you. Um, <laughs> in, in this next clip, Natalie, uh, one of Nigel's students, arrives for a piano lesson. Well, I say, I say she arrives for a piano lesson. It's a kind of, a sort of piano lesson. Hello, Monsieur Pony. Oh, Natalie. Yeah. How Ooh. are you? Um, is it two kisses? Mwah. It is. Mwah. Mwah. Oh, three. Mwah. Oh, that was the lift. Oh, <laughs> no, Jim. Oh, this is Sorry. awkward. What are the Sorry. rules? Oh. How, how are you, Natalie? Oh, I am very excited, Monsieur Penny. Only one week to go. Nigel, sorry to butt in. Could I have a word? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, sorry, Natalie. You you set up and get warmed up. I just need a quick word with the the Queen of Carnage, Belinda here. Ah, for sure. Nigel. Uh oh, Belinda. How are you? This is bad. I am well. Right. I'll get to the point. I, I don't like doing this. Oh. But I'm going to have to up the rate we charge you for the room. Oh. Only buy a fiver an hour. Oh. Uh, it's just while well, the art centre can't afford to subsidise you the way things are at the moment. I've worked it out. If you up your lessons to twelve quid an hour, you'll, um, well, you'll only be a pound an hour worse off. Result. She's good, isn't she? Yet yeah, the demo setting on her keyboard. She's miming. She wants to impress her sister-in-law at her 40th party next week. I'm teaching her to mime. Ah, right. She only wanted three lessons and I gave her a discount as technically I'm not actually teaching her to play. So I'm losing money on this one as well. <laughs> Sorry. Sitting here stony-faced. Trying to like it, though. Did you, did you not believe that it had a demo setting or what was the problem this time? I, I believe it has a demo setting. I don't <laughs> believe someone would ask someone to teach them to mime or that a music teacher would agree to do that. But again, why am I not allowing myself to enter a surreal world where all those things are true? It just, yeah, I'm, I, you know, I end up repeating myself. I'd, I'd love to suspend disbelief. I just couldn't do it uh, for whatever reason. I tell you what I thought was interesting was in the set because these the, the the first clip was from the first episode because mm. I should say they're only fifteen minute episodes aren't they and the second clip was from the second episode and it felt to me like all of a sudden in the second episode that the the um, the characters the the students all became larger than life they all kind of became a bit more. Uh, maybe it's because there were more of them in the second episode, but did you mm. get any sense of that, that they kind of all be, sort of be, you know, like she was all kind of a bit over the top? And I, I did feel that, but then I felt that in the first episode as well, I think. Um, it just, it literally fell apart for me in the first bar. The girl playing the cello, going back to that, um, we hear his monologue in, in the very opening seconds and he asked her to play an arpeggio. I think it's... It feels like it's insulting me in a way. I know that um, it's not reasonable to expect an audience to to suddenly know every musical um, bit of terminology. I wouldn't know that, but 
uh, it was so mm. off. He asked her to do an arpeggio and not a single note is right. And it's just that, oh, I can't do that stretch. Uh, if one or two notes are a bit wrong, then yeah, I can buy that. And that's sort of believable. And then the comedy would be in something else. But I felt I was being expected to find comedy in just silliness. And, you know, I'm a fine one to talk because at other times I love silliness. But it just, for me, mm. the, the combination of just being silly with music is not sufficient to make me laugh or to find it even mildly amusing. It's just incompetence is not of itself funny. It needs another ingredient and it was lacking. I wouldn't disagree with you on that one. I think that's that I, I feel the same about it as well. But I did think there was a there was more to it than that <laughs> i thought you more to i thought we'd have a, this. an ap free week but oh no <laughs> well, where, where's the depth there's, there's no hint of an, an a, a, another life outside of the music room I, I know a lot of comedy is meant to be about confinement but there's no hint that he's got um, the slightest rich hinterland that, we, that he's got a, do, do, we don't hear about a family or I'd probably be whinging even if he did talk about that, but um, I, I just, it just is two dimensional to me. Uh, if and that's being flattering, as I say. Well, he's, I mean, he's, you, you find out that he's he's single. Oh, Kel surprise, yeah. That, that you know that he's he's on the lookout for, um, um, or he, he like he quite likes one of his students. Um, and she was meant to be nineteen, wasn't she? The French one, I think. No, no, it was the other was one, wasn't it? That was playing the horn. Oh, we did have a cheap horn gag. Also, I used to play the French horn, so I'd heard every joke there is about the horn. Right. And believe me, there is only one joke, and I heard it numerous times, and that was pretty tedious as well. See, I told you, there's always a victim in jokes, and and usually it's the French horn player. And why not? <laughs> as, as, uh, I'm sounding like, to anyone, <laughs> particularly if they're listening to the slab for the first time, thinking. What's that bloke doing who hasn't got a sense of humour? What a waste of space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be inclined I to mean, agree. but there was so you kinda knew that. I mean and and you know, you kinda you know that, that he's got this issue around performing, that he gets terrible stage fright and that he can't perform. Oh yeah, he throws up. But but then we're meant to believe that's another thing, it's just so fantastical without being fantastic, if you know what I mean. Well no, he'd made other references to it prior to that. No, no, he? but he throws up while playing. Yeah. Not in front of an audience, but in that room, in the practice room, in front of and that was just unbelievable as well. But, but, he, but he's saying, isn't he, this is not a performance, this is not a performance, this is not a performance. He's trying to tell himself that it isn't. But of course, and it you, wasn't. But of course, that all was you the do, point. Yeah, but all you do by doing that is convince yourself that it is. It's like saying, um, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid. And you think, well, why are you saying they're not afraid? Because you're afraid. And mm. so, and so that was that was his reality, wasn't it? I suppose. Well, wouldn't you a, just get another job, be a bus driver, to or use a common term, yeah, build motorways or something? Yeah, I mean, again, I, there was like bits in it. The, the, the Dave Lamb came in at one point as a as a guy who um, he was a singer <laughs> um, doing a Larry Blackman kind of. Um, he did word up, didn't he? From uh, from cameo. <laughs> Actually, that was mildly amusing. Yes, and uh, they because were trying to... anyone who knows cameo always uh, sings like that. He was. Uh, he said they were racking the brains. Who else sings like a duck? And and, <laughs> and one of them said Macy Gray. Yeah, Macy Gray. Good idea. Macy Gray. That's but, true. That, and so, so for me, there was lots of like lovely stuff in there, and 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 uh, I mean the, the the coup de gras for me was the was the um uh the whole um they were trying to think of a of a code word for if there was an emergency <laughs> um and uh, uh vicky pepperdine kept sort of like through episode one and, and partway through episode two kept saying no oh, it's going to be this this and they they settled on mr smith um could you go to practice room four um and then dave land turns up as i'm mr smith you've been calling for me I, I don't know i just i just went with it i loved it i thought there was something i thought it was slick it was fresh innovative um true to life i thought it was well played i thought vicky pepperdine was great i thought dave lamb was great true to life yeah 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 i do okay. i think because well, the whole i mean i i don't know about you but i've never i've never met a, a music teacher i mean my brother-in-law used to teach music as well he used to he used to teach uh, percussion at, at quite a nice school thank you very much indeed <laughs> and thank you. um and I don't, know, I don't know what he was like, but I'm, I've never known teachers who, music teachers who go, oh, I can't wait 
um, you know, I've got a, I've got a lesson. It always struck no, they, me. They'd rather be performing. Yeah, right? it always yeah. struck me as a job that you kind of did because you couldn't, you know, do anything else or whatever. So th there was uh, that's why I thought it was true to life was that was that, um, you know, I I could I could relate to him really. I think was the thing. But it sounds like you had exactly the polar opposite experience. Yes, I was I was up the pole. Um, yeah, terrible, isn't it? Um, I mean, I'll dust off the the old concept of anchoring, where you decide in your opinion and you look for evidence. And I, I you know, I have to come clean on that. Have I done that? Mm. Um, especially since I could at least uh, smile at the what you could call a cameo appearance. Ba bum. Ha ha. Um, ha ha ha. ha. Uh, and but I tried to turn it around. I just couldn't. And. Um, I couldn't enter that world, which I assume is meant to be meant to be enjoyed as larger than life. That is the very humour that it's 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 exaggerated. And other weeks people will will you know listen to me say ah, but the other week you said you enjoyed it being turned up to eleven and being exaggerated. That was the comedy, um, and uh, yeah, that's a, that's a fair call. I think there must be other because I do the same, and I think there must be other things at play. Most certainly. And I don't think we've really got to the bottom of what they are um, when we've both been through similar experiences. And I, but I think there is, you know, and I don't know whether it's just a human thing that you just take a dislike completely unreasonably to a character and you just can't get past that. Because I've been in exactly the same situation. You know, I wouldn't criticise you for it because I think everybody has. If you, if you like mm. to watch comedy and you kind of think... It's not working for me. I don't know why. You know, this is the kind of thing I like, but it just it just doesn't work. I think you pretty much uh, hit the spot there. Um, he, for me, he was annoying without being amusing. Should we put ourselves out of our misery? Let's give it some numbers then. What what are you going to give it out of five, young man? Well, it's not a misery for you, but for me, I'm afraid uh, I can do no more than give it a two, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. Um, pretty miserable two there from miserable Adrian. <laughs> I, on the other hand, I'm going to give it a seven, and uh, which is which <laughs> is it nine out of ten, which is nice, but mathematically impossible. <laughs> no, I'm going to give it a four. Blimey, four. Sid. And and I'll tell you, without a word of a lie, now once mm. once I'd listened to both episodes twice. The next action that I took was to put the rest of the series, um, the next, the rest of the next three series, actually, onto my phone so I could. Uh, so, I well, could that's the other thing. It. How the hell did it get three series? Don't start me on that. Love it. I love it. I think it's uh, it's a smasher. Anyway, uh, the music <laughs> teacher, uh, Richie Webb, is uh, written and produced by Richie Webb, uh, directed by Nick Walker. Um, what have you got for us next week, you big old sausage? <laughs> Make your mind up. Am I a young man or a big old sausage? You're a young man's big old sausage. Uh, well, um, yes, that's back to Joe Lysett, isn't it? In yeah. uh, Northern Ireland, no. What have I got for you? Well, uh, I don't know if I ever saw it, but I thought, well, it's holiday season. Why don't we shog off? And that is a legal term. Is it? Uh, it's an old English term meaning leave. Oh. Uh, go away, oh. and it seems appropriate. Why don't we shog off to Benidorm for a holiday? What do you ah, think about that? Is that ITV's Benidorm? Is it? It like? most definitely is. Although oh, okay. these days, it turns out it's on Netflix and Prime. So, hasn't this? This is. Uh, I and mean, we can talk more about this next week, obviously. But mm -hmm. hasn't this become a last of the summer wine type thing? It's run for about ten years, hasn't it, or something? Well, I, you know more about it than me, so I'm, I've got a fair bit of homework to do. I think I may have seen one. Um, we're going to go into the ground floor, a classic series one, episode one okay. of Benidorm. Right. Was this the one, though? Because I was scratching my head and I couldn't stand it up on, uh, not my head, but the facts <laughs> on the interweb, which we know only tells the truth. Is it not the show that was paired with another one for the first two series or so, where you had the making of? No, I'm you're you're, loopy. you're thinking I'm of confusing it. Moving wallpaper, uh, which was paired with. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, we'll have to do that another week or another two weeks, maybe. Yeah, I remember that was that was. I remember thinking at the time, meh, you know, mm. it didn't kind of. 
Well, they they stopped the moving wallpaper one, didn't they? But the yeah. other one carried on. Oh, I, I didn't thought know that was that Benidorm, that's but a bit weird. No, I don't think so. Clear. Anyway, well, we'll do our respective homeworks and um, sort that one out. All right. Untangle knickers. Quick confession. Possible. I think I should do yes. it now. I've never seen an episode of Benidorm. That's not such a terrible confession. And in the context of the slab, it's like going into the courthouse as a member of the jury and you've not heard anything in the papers, so you're not prejudiced. Oh, exactly, exactly. Mm. A- apart from That's my good. own inbuilt prejudice, which I'm sure I'll well. be able to <laughs> muster up and, uh, and, yeah. and run with. I'm sure it'll bubble up whether you like it or not, Mrs.